Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this session. Um, in the last session, uh, we had discussed various principles of banking and of which uh, we little bit discussed the principles of how does a bank manage interest rate risk. So in the previous class, uh, we little bit started discussing uh, various methods for measuring the interest rate risk. So at that time, uh, I had introduced it to you. Uh, the basic gap and duration analysis. So in today's session, uh, we will go a little bit more in depth to discuss gap and duration analysis and how to measure interest rate risk. So this I have shown you in the previous class. So you can see here that uh, look at the balance sheet of this bank. We classify the entire the assets and liabilities into two groups. One we call it assets, we call it rate sensitive assets and the other one we call it fixed rate assets. So similarly about the liabilities, uh, we make it rate sensitive liabilities and fixed rate liabilities. So from this, the main point here is uh, when there is an interest rate change, so mainly it affects the rate sensitive assets and rate sensitive liabilities. So Again, the illustration just to relook into this. So you can see here that the total assets is 100 million, and of which we can see that rate sensitive assets is 50 million, and rate sensitive liabilities are 50 million. Okay. So look at scenario one. What if there is an increase in interest rate? So suppose that interest rates rise by five percentage points on average from 10 percentage to 15 percentage. And in this scenario, suppose a bank has a balance sheet something like this and what would happen to the net worth of this bank. So let us look into this. So look at the income on the assets, you know that it will increase by 1 million because the interest rate has risen by from 10 percentage to 15 percentage. So you can may just make a simple calculation here, 5 percentage of the 20 million rate sensitive assets, you can see that the payment that the bank going to get from the increase due to the increase in the rate of interest is 1 million. But at the same time, you also know that the liabilities, the payments the bank has to make that will increase that the 5 percentage of uh, 15 million rate sensitive liabilities that is the payment bank has to make 2.5 million. So in the simple example here, you can see that the banks uh, pay the receipt, the revenue increased by 1 million, but the liabilities that the payments in the liabilities increased by 2.5 million. So the net worth of this bank that you can see that actually it declined by uh, 1.5 million from this examples. So the same thing we can calculate using some simple formula that is called basic gap analysis. Similarly, the same thing, the same example if I put it, suppose there is a decrease in interest rate. So you can see in the same calculation, you can see that if that happens, the what happened to the revenue and as well as the payment. So you can see that in this example, the scenario 2, uh, when there is a decrease in interest rate, you can see that the net worth of this bank increase by 1.5 million. Right. So in this things what we can infer that if a bank has more rate sensitive liabilities than assets that is in our case the example we have taken here a rise in interest rate will reduce bank profits that is what we discussed in scenario 1 and a decline in interest rates will raise bank profits that we had seen in scenario 2. So this idea uh, we can translate into a formula that is called just to begin with is called basic gap analysis. The gap that we mentioned mention here is based on the rate sensitive assets and the rate sensitive liabilities. So the gap between that. So the gap analysis it measures that the rate sensitive assets minus rate sensitive liabilities multiplied by change in rate of interest. So you can see here that the gap is 20 minus 50 that is minus 30 is the gap 
So, the change in the rate of interest is uh, 5 percent that is 0 0.05. So, from applying this one uh, you can see that if there is an increase in rate of interest you can see that from this example that the bank net worth or bank profits also we can also call it in that way because both way interchangeably used but ideally is better to use the changes in net worth. So, you can see here that the net worth of the bank declined by uh, one minus 1 1.5 because we have put rate of change, the change in uh, interest rate as 5 percent that the positive. So, similarly if you apply negative change that obviously you will get uh, plus uh, 1.5 million that is the change in the net worth of this bank. So, here uh, what we have shown in the uh, balance sheet, we did not mention the duration of assets and liabilities, but you know that most of the assets and liabilities just looking at the banking principle, banks borrow short and lends long. So, lending means actually mostly the assets of the bank and um, liabilities of the bank is the borrowing, the deposit. So, actually we need to look into actually both the assets and liabilities, the duration actually varies and also the rate sensitivity also varies within assets based on the duration, right. So, we need to bring that one into our discussion. So, here we introduce the another approach of calculating that is including incorporating the duration of assets and liabilities. So, we bring uh, discuss here the basic duration analysis. So, in this example uh, look at the, the balance sheet just like total assets uh, we can see that uh, 100 million total liabilities 100 mil 90 million and bank capital uh, is 10 million. So, from this uh, we also say that what is the average duration of assets? The average duration of the assets is 3 years and average duration of liability suppose 2 years. So, in this case what if the interest rates rise by 5 percentage points from 10 percentage to 15 percentage. So, in this case we apply the duration analysis. So, duration analysis is also called as income gap analysis. What it does is it measures the percentage change in market value of securities by using this formula. That means the inverse of duration in years uh, times percentage point changes interest rate. So, that we have to calculate separately for assets and separately for liabilities then we apply this one we will bring put in the gap analysis, but this is the duration is the starting point for that. So, look at this here look at for example, the first part of the assets asset side. So, from this you can see that given all this basic information what if interest rates rise from 10 percentage to 15 percentage. So, you can see from here that the market value of assets uh, falls by 15 percentage. How come? Because you can see that the minus that the duration is 3 years. So, we take minus 3 years times the changes in the rate of interest. The percentage point changes in interest is 0 0.05 of 100 million. So, you can see that the market value of assets falls by uh, minus 15 million. And you can see that market value of liabilities falls by 10 percentage. You can get it that the average duration of the liabilities is 2 years. We take negative inverse that the minus 2 years times the percentage change in the rate of interest that is 0 0.05 of 90 million and you will be getting minus 9 million. So, from this what you can see the net worth of this bank it decreased because the decline in asset that, that, that is minus 15. Uh, change in uh, market value of assets is minus 15 and changes in the market value of liabilities is uh, 9 million. So, when you take the gap of this duration and you will be getting minus 6 million. So, from this example illustration you can see that the net worth of the bank that is the market value of assets minus liabilities declined by minus 6 million. So, this is the basic duration analysis. However, there is a problem with this. The problem is that actually we are not taking the weighted part of this uh, duration of these assets and liabilities. So, before we discuss that, let me also introduce you why, how come we got this duration analysis and you, can, you may also wonder how come we get the minus 
or the negative duration in years why, why are we putting uh, minus duration in years so in order to answer that this formula was derived from has been derived from Macaulay's duration analysis so what Macaulay's duration analysis says this is the formula for that uh, this is widely been uh, used in the financial calculation particularly in the bond market and you can see I am just reproducing the content here uh, what is Macaulay formula duration so you can see that uh, duration the duration what we mentioned here they calculate using this formula it also has modified duration uh, of analysis as well the Macaulay's modified duration this is the um, uh, simple formula initial formula then the modified duration analysis also has been used so uh, this is has been widely used what i am trying to say here is that why we are getting the inverse duration so that is my main point so from here the shorter way to calculate the coupon bonds duration actually it has been because the duration the shorter version is used as 1 plus i divided by i minus the right hand side expression and what here actually this d has been used is an elasticity measure so that is the elasticity of security with respect to change in i so when i say security i mean assets or liabilities right so so simple formula here actually this d is an elasticity measure and we can relate it with the elasticity of demand for example uh, that measure also we can relate so what if i use the exact formula of elasticity so in this case assume that are taking d as an elasticity measure so that the elasticity here is inverse because it's a negative elasticity negative slope and you can see here is that actually uh, minus del p divided by del i but times i divided by p so applying that to exactly the price elasticity of demand concepts here and instead we put that um, delta p that the delta q because elasticity price elasticity of demand is actually uh, del q divided by del price that the changes in price but i am not bringing here price because since price here we are using price for security here so instead that's what i am not complicating otherwise simply uh, elasticity of demand uh, formula is del q divided by del p uh, times p by q right but here actually p this one we are taking uh, changes in rate of interest so and this we replace with uh, the price of uh, security uh, this uh, we are taking the security so the only slight changing tweaking we are doing with uh, this formula so from this you can see that the duration is del p divided by uh, del i times i divided by p so from this taking the del p on the left hand side then you will get that uh, minus d that is the inverse duration times del i divided by 1 plus i times p p here we say that the total suppose if you take p is p as the assets so we take suppose p is assets then suppose the value then the value will be 100 from our example so this is not the price just remember that this is the total assets so you can use this p also as liability so in our example suppose here assets is p is equal to 100 so if you take the security another security the liabilities in our example liabilities were 90 million so you can also use that value there so in our uh, numerical calculation illustration we will be using this formula so what if so this formula is mainly for one kind of securities you can apply for start with the assets and also you can re uh, repeat this calculation for liabilities as well so what is the net worth net worth is actually the changes in net worth is uh, changes in assets minus changes in liabilities so replicate this formula here that is the first part so the p value we p we replace it with the assets that is 100 million in our example similarly here um, minus duration times del i divided by 1 plus i times l l means in our example that uh, 90 million in our illustrative example so this is how we derive uh, this inverse duration of uh, uh, value here let us now use some numerical values one of the issue that we discussed in the previous slide is that we take the assets duration and liabilities duration we uh, taken without taking 
uh, any weight actually we just assume that the total duration of the assets is 3 years and the total duration of liabilities is 2 years but you know the bank's balance sheet is it has diverse uh, items of assets with a different durations and diverse uh, diverse it items of liabilities with a different durations uh, so what we need to do that we need to take the weight because for each of the sub components of assets and the liabilities and we need to calculate a weighted duration of these uh, assets and liabilities. So, in this case uh, what we need to do that we need to calculate the weighted duration of each and every uh, components of items sub items in the assets and liabilities. So, in this case we calculate a weighted duration analysis. So, in this look at here the total asset we are uh, taking the same example um, is here we take assume that the total asset is 100 million total liabilities is 95 million and we take bank capital as 5 million uh, both assets and liabilities with a varying maturity of periods. Now, the rate of interest increase from 10 percentage to 11 percentage in our example. So, in this case how to perform the duration analysis here actually we are going to use the same formula uh, first this is for the asset we calculate and separately then also calculate separately for liabilities then we take the difference. So, prior to that we need to calculate the weighted duration how to calculate this. So, look at this uh, banks uh, balance sheet first we are presenting here assets. So, in this assets as I mentioned you stated just before that there are different components different sub items. So, we need to we need to take you know that the value differ and the duration also differ. For example, reserves and cash items it does not have any duration it is a zero duration right is the most uh, because is reserve is that they kept with the uh, excess reserve with the central bank and the cash item vault cash with the bank itself. So, in this case uh, you know that the weighted duration what do you need to do? it is you actually you are getting uh, this times this you are getting 0. So, uh, take a case for example, securities of in the case of securities of 5 million with maturities less than 1 year take this case how to calculate the weighted duration. So, here you know that the manager multiplies uh, the duration because the duration is here 0 0.4 years that the duration for this uh, then manager multiply by uh, multiply that the total amount of less than that is actually this asset that the less than 1 year 5 times 0 0.4 then you are getting 0 0.02. So, this is one item. So, similarly perform this uh, exercise for each and every uh, every component that means multiply this with uh, this with and this with then what you are getting then you will be getting when you sum it up that a weighted duration you will be getting 2.70 uh, that is the weighted duration for uh, the entire assets. So, similarly repeat this exercise for liabilities as well. So, multiply this one for example, this one then you will be getting 0 0.032 uh, that is for checkable deposits just to go back here. Uh, so, here uh, the we got the manager multi 0 0.4 year duration times uh, 0 0.5 million then you also need to divide it with a 100 million that I forgot to mention to get a, a weighted duration of 0 0.02 this I sorry I am for, forgot to mention that. Uh, so, this you need to multiply for example, this you will get by multiplying this one with a 0 0.4 uh, then dividing this one with a, the total assets that is the 100 million. Uh, so, then you will be getting 0 0.02. So, similarly you need to do separately for each and uh, every items and then repeat this exercise for uh, each of the liabilities component as well. Uh, so, just to say here that to get 0 0.32 the weighted duration for checkable deposits is determined by multiplying by the 2 year duration by 15 million divided by total liabilities of 95 million. So, finally you will be getting 1.03. Uh, as the weighted duration of the liabilities. Uh, so, you can see this is the total balance sheet of this bank that the assets and I am just pre presenting everything in one slide and then you got this is the weighted duration of the liabilities and this is the weighted duration of assets and plugging this value in the formula. So, what we are doing here that suppose the bank manager wants to know what happens 
when the interest rates rise from 10 percentage to 11 percentage. So, taking total value of assets value is 100 million applying this formula. So, here you can see that percentage change in uh, change in the value of this security P means for here we mean asset the price of the value of these assets and you apply this then you will get the percentage points. So, here and when you want to because this is the percentage point that the percentage P then you get exactly this formula then when you want to get only the value absolutely the change in the value not the percentage then uh, you need to get the minus uh, duration times i divided by 1 plus i all multiplied by what is the total assets total asset that the p you can you can also put p or otherwise you can also mention it as the assets so suppose in this case the total asset value is 100 million so the market value of assets fall by uh, 2 point ok sorry I forgot to mention this example here. So, in this example what you can see here that the duration percentage change in uh, that the del i and i everything is given here. So, if you plug this value here that is the apply this one you can see that the percentage change uh, in the asset is 2.5 5 percentage and when you multiply this with the p that the asset that is 100 this one is 100 then you will be getting seeing that from this 2.5 million is the uh, change in the duration of this uh, change in this value of this asset. And similarly for liabilities also we can calculate. So, you can see here that the liabilities of the bank changes by this much. So, what you need to do now? So, we need to calculate either uh, we can directly calculate the percentage change in assets minus liabilities when you apply this formula. Then finally, you will be getting uh, this value. So, you can see that the changes in the value uh, absolute value of assets is 2.5 million and this one is 0 0.09 million. So, finally, you can see from this exercise that um, the net worth of this bank using the weighted duration analysis. Uh, it declines by min minus 1.6 million. So, this is the way you calculate uh, the weighted duration analysis. Using the weighted duration analysis, you can calculate what is the change in the uh, net worth of the bank due to the changes in the rate of interest. And the same calculation we can also do using an alternative formula. I have seen most sometime many finance classes they use this formula. Uh, here actually the actually what the, the intuition is same what we have done we slightly tweak it uh, using some other formula. Here the uh, first we calculate the duration gap uh, using this way that the duration uh, of the assets minus you take the uh, divide uh, total liability divided by total assets times the duration right. Uh, this is actually duration gap is equal to duration of the assets uh, minus L divided by assets uh, times duration of liabilities. So, you can also apply the same formula, uh, this formula to calculate the estimate that we got is because we got minus uh, 1.6 million that is the decline in the total net worth of the bank. So, we can suppose what if we use this formula, suppose the bank manager wants to know what happens when the interest rates rise from 10 percentage to 11 percentage. The total asset value is 10, 100 million. Uh, the total liability value is 95 million. So, use equation uh, this equation to calculate the change in the market value of the assets and liabilities. So, in this case I am uh, reproducing the same uh, balance sheet uh, because the assets here uh, the liabilities what we got from the previous estimate uh, weighted duration analysis this is what we got. What when we apply this formula what we are going to get. So, look at this formula here you can see that the duration the weighted average duration of the assets 2.7 the way we calculate we reproduce here we take the same and similarly duration weighted average duration of the liabilities we are going to get uh, 1.03 
and then you will get duration, uh, duration gap applying this one in this formula that the duration of the assets is this one and then the liability is divided by assets, uh, you will be getting 94, the 95 divided by 100 times the duration of the liabilities, you will be getting 1.03 is equal to. So, finally, when you calculate from this, uh, this minus this, you will be getting uh, 1.72 years as the duration gap. And the duration gap, this one what we need to do now to get the changes in the net worth, uh, we need to multiply this one with the assets of the bank. So, what will happen if interest rates change? The bank manager uses duration gap calculation to obtain the change in the market value of net worth as a percentage, that is very important point here, percentage of total assets. Uh, so, plugging this one, applying the same calculation here, uh, we are going to get the following uh, result. The change in the market value of net worth as a percentage of assets is calculated as uh, using this one. Um, this one we calculate in this way. So, the minus duration gap we already uh, know this value in the previous example that is one, my 1.72 years uh, times uh, del i divided by uh, 1 plus i. So, now what is the change in the market value of net worth as a percentage of assets if interest rate rise from 10 percentage to 11 percentage. So, you will be getting this like this that the duration gap that we calculated from the previous formula, formula used in the previous slide is 1.72 and multiplied by this. Then you will be getting uh, minus 1.6 percentage. So, from this you can see that with the assets totaling dollar 100 million, it indicates a fall in the market value of net worth of 1.6 million. So, this value we also got from our previous estimates the weighted duration analysis. So, from there also you can see that the weighted duration analysis also uh, we got um, this value that is minus 1.6 million. So, in this class uh, session finally, um, we have reviewed uh, various uh, methods of measuring the interest rate risk. So, we started with the basic gap analysis, then we discussed uh, basic duration analysis and subsequently uh, we brought the duration of uh, assets and liabilities, each and every components of li li assets and liabilities we discussed, we brought it and in order to incorporate that we use weighted duration analysis and then we there we introduced a formula if, uh, derived from Macaulay's and we also discussed the alternative formula to derive the same measure. Um, and in the next session, uh, we will discuss the central banking, the role of central banking and then how uh, central banking and money supply are affected and related concept we will be discussing in our next session. Thank you.